can play as tough as we need to play. You gotta learn to play tough. It's not about talent. If talent was the case, then uh, it's like the year we went to the Final Four. Number one recruiting class in the nation that year that had five Jerises was Kentucky. They didn't make the tournament. We went to the Final Four because we had men. You, know, you don't win with freshmen at this level, multiple freshmen. You just don't. Nobody does. Number one recruiting class was Kentucky. The number two recruiting class was Duke. The thing that they both had in common that year, neither one made the tournament because they had a bunch of Jerises. Talented, talented kids that are 19 years old. You know, we'd all like to make our living playing against those guys. You know, they're just not ready. Now, the next year, they're going to be a problem. The year after that, more huge problem. Because they go from 19 to 20 to 21. They, they go through all the trials and tribulations and wars and battles of getting your head uh, beat in, you get beat up, you get knocked down, but you, uh, you keep getting up. Uh, Jairus has been knocked down this year. But he's keep getting up. I told him, come to work every day. You know, the first step on the ladder to success is always failure. Most people, uh, immature people don't deal with well with failure. You know, and immature people don't understand that it is going to be failure. I tell them, prepare for failure. You're going to fail. We all fail. You know, figure it out. You know, nobody's feeling sorry for you. Um, it's like Emmanuel. Look at all the trials and tribulations he's been through. Look at tonight. He's better. He's a much better player today than he was a month ago. Um, but any any time that uh, I get Emmanuel minutes like tonight, it's an investment in our future. You know, these guys are our future. Um, so, uh, JBA, uh, how many minutes you play tonight, uh, JBA? 19, Emmanuel got to play 19. You know, if, Ter if Marcus hadn't have got hurt, Emmanuel might not have got 19, might have got 12. So there's always, um, I saw a lot of positives uh, 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 tonight. Um, but the big, biggest takeaway that I took out of that game is why the hell did Ryan Elton play more? <laughs> we'll go to Kelsey Fair and then we'll go back to Kristen. Oh, are you done with that thought? <clears throat> Kelvin, so it was a passing thought. <laughs> Kelvin, on Jarris uh, being a freshman and, and playing meaningful minutes, it, was it – by based on with need his physical just the fact that his physical no in terms of him playing tonight and being a, no and being a freshman and playing as much as he's playing uh was it yeah yeah need going into season and the fact for me that, yeah for him, uh, no. for him physically then no i just uh, um that's one of the good thing about being a head coach you start who you want to i just want to start see how you do you know, um like i said it's uh you know, he played good in one of the open scrimmages, not so good in the other. He's had good games, bad games. Um, um, but if I were to put my five guys that impact the winning uh, out there, um, I'd probably have Reggie out there. But uh, our guys don't have egos. We, we don't deal with egos here. We, we coach them out of that. You know, uh, that's, this isn't an ego program. Other coaches probably have to put up with that stuff, but uh, our ego is a team ego. Our ego comes from getting 50% of your misses and being excited about that because we did it together. Uh, Jamal getting 10 assists, being, being excited for Jamal because we're a team. Um, but our, our kids, uh, but you, those freshmen have to understand, but that's why you have a culture. Programs that have a culture never have consistency because you're basing it on something that uh, – that's um, the players aren't playing for each other. Our kids play for each other. They're excited for each other's uh, success, and they're very vocal about that.